Hey everybody and welcome to the latest episode of Indie Film Cafe. I'm your host tonight, Paul A. Presenza, otherwise known as the Moo Cow. Moo everybody. Moo. And we are Moo. joined tonight <laughs> with several co-hosts and starting with... Which, uh, hi, I'm uh, your co-host Jonathan A. Moody. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And joining us is a special co-host down below. Say hello. I'm Angel. Hi. <laughs> welcome back, Angel. Yes, welcome back. Hi, thanks for having me back. <laughs> yep, she survived. Uh, what was it? Creeping Terror? No, what well, was it? it was from Helicane. From Helicane. From Helicane. Yeah, from Helicane. <laughs> and you also survived. Uh, what did you watch the first time with us? It was Creeping Terror, I think, the first time uh -huh. you watched something with us. So, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> two two old classic stinkers, and you've still come back for more. I got to appreciate yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah. After this one, I'm surprised <laughs> you're even back. <laughs> well, that is a nice segue <laughs> because tonight's episode yeah. is a stinky werewolf movie, we think, from 2006 called Lycan Colony. And I'm telling you, there's not much to liken about this movie. It's mm. just crazy. This this colony is not very likened. Had had either of you heard of this movie before? No, never, never. <laughs> nope, nope. Right. I should have, but I, I haven't. Yeah, I'm no, this... very glad I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one that had been recommended to me by god knows who i at this point i forget because so many people are like oh you like bad movies you should try this and i have this giant list <laughs> that i sometimes get around to but i this is one i did get around to several years ago and it was like wow okay i'm gonna file this in my list of movies i gotta show everybody <laughs> but that list is also very very long as you can imagine <laughs> but it was just about time so we pulled it's her out of the dust his his list is so long that he keeps going. <laughs> oh, it's it's on my list, and I'll be mm -hmm. like, "How many fucking movies do you have on your list? What like, is not on your list? Exactly. Your list. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my you know my my cup of overfloweth at this point. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, and sometimes my list and your list kind of in intermingle, so sometimes we end up doing each other's lists, you know. Or uh, it, it it happens, but. I like to get a movie that neither one of you guys have seen, and mm -hmm. I, I seem to have scored with this one. And as it turns out, I knew Riff Tracks had covered this, although I hadn't seen it. But it turns out Red Later Media did this, and I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, they did that so as that well. No, so there a lot, you of, go. lot so, of people, I think, uh, do this one because it's really terrible, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and that's why it was suggested to me. <laughs> but in any event, let's go off and hear some of that moon music <laughs> and we'll be right back to talk some more about this um er, uh movie <laughs> the chicken says we're ready okay well we are back so first impressions angel what did you think um it was very hard for me to finish i kept getting distracted literally by everything else in the world if there was a dust bunny on the floor i would have been like oh this is i like watching this dust bunny <laughs> um when i was watching the movie i felt like i was in a terrible 90s music video <laughs> it's true it's true <laughs> I, I can see that. Some of the graphics are that year or less, I think. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of this looked like it was made by like Windows Media Player, you know. Yeah. You know, you you might be right. <laughs> so did did you did you find it boring? Was that the problem or just so bad just, that you couldn't pay attention? It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> I yes. I mean, the, the quality is, was, you know, just really just kind of not the greatest. And then with all the like the visual effects, like the say it was it was like a 90s music video. You kind of felt like you were tripping most of the time that you were watching the movie. Like and you had these weird blood sprays that 
like just dissipated into midair. It was so weird. It was it was awful and weird. Yes, my two favorite kinds uh, of uh, <laughs> characteristics for movies. Mr. Moody, what did you think? So I, I ended up watching this over at your house. And so we watched it and we had some problems, you know, just getting yeah, it did. all set up. But we finally got it all set up and we watched it. And we were just like, I was just like, okay. Like, because I watched the first, I think, 10 minutes or so uh, by myself beforehand. And then I, this is definitely a movie you got to watch with other people. So yeah. I don't know if you watched yeah. this with anybody that else, helps. Angel, but it, it, maybe your boyfriend should have watched it with you, you know, like <laughs> it, it would have probably been a little bit more fun. You guys were all probably would have turned it off together, you know. Like, Listen, I, can't I, will, I will subject him to this torture one day. Good. Outstanding. Yes, Outstanding. That's what we love to hear. It'll um, be a punishment. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> You know what? Uh, you didn't take me out tonight. Guess what? We're watching. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can call it. Because uh, uh, I think if you can survive it once, you could survive it more than once. Um, yeah. I, when I and saw, there's nothing like a bad werewolf movie. Come on. No. Um, not see the biggest problem with the movie is that it's just it, it's just not fun. You know, like if if it were more fun. You know, I, I I'd get a kick out of it, but it was, it was literally so bad that yeah. it it was just it was hard to like because I know that it was the guy's first movie, you know, like first film, and I know he's working on like what sequel or not sequel, but a second movie. He's working know? on a second movie. Dear God, um, I hope he learned. You know, you please help but, us all. Yeah, <laughs> I, but he like. I, the, the problem with the movie is made in what, 2006? Well, it was, it was released in 2006. I think it was made in 2005 or possibly earlier. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were sections of this film that was filmed earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes you know, and you know Angel from being an uh, actress in the indie world, that sometimes you don't get everything done right when you started and you have to come back and reshoot. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, yeah, you get all these problems. Um, I didn't see anything like I didn't I didn't notice anybody's hair like looking different or anything like that. I think I I would get too distracted by the fact that one time in the world he's sleeping and then he's awake and then he's in one world and then he's in another world. I even said I like turned to Paul and I go, what in the world is going on? He's like, (laughs) he's in a he's in a, a different reality. And I go, what? Like, is that really what's going on? Because I really right, believe yeah, like, <laughs> He fell from one reality to another. That's the only thing I can imagine because, like, at times he fell. I guess we'll go into that when we go into the story. But, like, there's just, yeah. it just got so confusing and so, it's just so bad. See, that, just yeah. when you thought Dark Wolf was bad. No, Dark Wolf is a fucking Academy Award winner compared to this movie. <laughs> like, I can, I, you know, I could watch Kane Hodder. Yeah, as a werewolf, way more than I could watch this. You know, these people like that. This is just ridiculous. You know. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it happens. You know, you see a movie that you consider bad, and then you watch another movie where even the very basics of elementary filmmaking are just butchered, either because they don't know what they're doing, they don't have the money, or some other reason. Um, you know, like the sound was not good in this. The lighting was really yeah, oh bad. Oh my god, this. the sound! The sound! Oh god, it's like they were talking through muffled. Like what? <laughs> By the what? way, on like, Tubi, like on there is elbow. Tubi. There is subtitles. By the way, we did not put subtitles on when we watched it, which we should have. Should have. I have, but, I have subtitles on for everything, which I'm glad I did have subtitles on for this. Yes because you needed um, it but i mean at least from hell it came at least that was like you know bad in like a funny way you know like it was funny you could laugh at it this you just couldn't laugh at it you were just like what like is this really happening right <laughs> right it definitely has the feel of just being thrown together kind of at the last minute or just not well prepared. And there's a reason for that. And that's because it was kind of sort of thrown together haphazardly at the last minute by people who had never done this before. Um, One of the points of evidence for that is the fact that 
you have a female actress playing a character by the name of Russ, who is supposed to have been a male <laughs> character, but that actor turned out at the last minute couldn't make it. So oh, they had to get a female person to do it. I think when I watched it with you and I heard the name Russ come, you know, about the girl, <laughs> I even said that to you. I was like, it must have been a male that they had for that role because that role yep. was very manly. Like, you know what I mean? Like they, they seem to kind of make it like that. And then all of a sudden it's like, uh, I mean, it was fine. Like the girl did it. I, I thought of she all did. the things she did it. She well, did, she the did best a good job. job. And it yeah. was a good, I think, a good way to help the movie by having a female actress play that part. The problem is, just change the name of the person yeah. so it's not confusing. I mean, sure, you could have a female named Russ, but that's going to cause a little bit of confusion. confusion. With at least something bit. somewhere along the line where you explain why the person's name is Russ as opposed to... I, you know, something more expected. They, they said that they said they apparently did that because they didn't want to, uh, uh, they didn't want to change the script, change the script. And, yeah. and, and what's funny about that is like, you don't need to change the script to change a name. You just have the person say the other, you know what I mean? Like you could keep the script saying Russ and I then mean, have everybody else. They're literally talking about not wanting to, cross out russ and put in a new that's what i'm saying like on every page saying i think that's what they were saying is like they don't want to change the name because they don't want to they don't want to reprint out scripts and i'm like you don't need to do that you just change the name like it doesn't matter it's it's funny some filmmakers are really weird about their scripts I, i have heard stories where some directors they don't want them marred they don't want them written on they don't want notes on there they don't want them crumpled some of them even say i need to have these back and they number them so that they get them all back and they so they have them every single night and at the end of the production they have them all it's a weird sort of thing now i'm not saying that's what happened with with rob roy our director rob roy but it's got to be a fake name come on now possibly <laughs> but um I, I don't think so but I, I guess this is a good segue where we can start talking about some of the background for this particular film. Now, there's not a lot because this movie just kind of came and sank and it never it never really did much of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the writer and director is named Rob Roy. He was a guy who did some work in the business before as an editor. So he was an editor in certain things like he was an editor of a movie called uh, Brothers in Communion um he was in something called uh a a bunch of shorts and he did a few other things so he he had done some editing in the past but this as you mentioned is his first directorial uh film and as a matter of fact uh according to the information i saw he is actually directing a movie called damaged disciples this year 2022 so nice he's 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 at it again He's um, at it again. Oh, no. He's at it again. <laughs> now, the, the, he, here's the other thing. This is a guy who was also the writer because he wrote and published several books about this story. Okay? So if you were to go on Amazon, you'll see there's a book called Lycan Colony, and then there's the follow-up called Lycan Colony, R-O-T-T, Rage of the Thermiomorphs, um, which they actually oh. mention once or twice in there. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about, but they did mention the thermiomorphs and it's, you know, a particular kind of, of, of werewolf that, you know, the details got buried because we couldn't hear anything because the sound was lousy and, you know, et cetera. We never knew what the hell was going on. But in between all this, this guy has actually written this world with these same characters, the same characters that are in the book are in the movie. Okay. And in both books, from what I understand, so it's not like he was taking something that he didn't, you know, was adapting something he wasn't familiar with. He was extremely familiar with mm-hmm. all of these characters and the story and everything. He just, he just, you know, it's not the same thing writing things down as it is putting it on a film. It's an extremely yeah. different medium. Oh so. my God. By the way, real quick, that Damaged Disciples movie is coming out in July. I think really? that was at, like July 10th, 2022. Okay. 
It's okay. about anal retentive atheist social worker Jimmy um, <laughs> stumbles upon a society of angels and demons blending in with humans, bartering to assist in a grand quest. He has no choice but to help end war between good and evil. But which side will he be on? Oh, you know? so he's okay. abandoned the werewolf thing. Well, he's doing, not doing <laughs> werewolves, and now he's doing a uh, angels and demons movie. Oh boy. Maybe they're angel werewolves and demon werewolves. I don't. I doubt it. Or angel <laughs> vampires and demon werewolves. That'd be cool. I mean, Ooh. where do werewolves go when they die? If you're a good they, werewolf, do you go to werewolf heaven? We're, we're, <laughs> we're giving him more. Become credit. a were angel. Become a were angel. You know. Yeah. Angel, <laughs> were angel. <Hey. laughs> um, so for the most part, when you look at the cast, the cast is a, a lot of it is made up of friends and family. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Um, or people that just never worked in anything else ever again. Um, there are a couple folks who were in some things. Uh, Sandy, the obnoxious mother. <laughs> she really? was played by somebody by the name of uh, Kadrolshaw Ona Carroll, who is in uh, Toxic Tutu. I've never saw that. A movie called The Hater. The Hater. And then something called The Worcester Zombie Department. But she's mostly <laughs> been in a lot of, um, as an extra, in a lot of appearances in, in other films. And also in a bunch of shorts. And then, interestingly enough, she was also an actress who was utilized in airport TV um, in various airports all over the country doing commercials and advertising, stuff like that. And she's also a TV producer, um, more of a local TV producer. And she has done a number of shows, including the Paranormals, the Paranormals 13 News, the Paranormals Special Reports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. So I don't think she has as much acting experience as she does production experience, but clearly she wanted to branch out. And this was a this was a role she wanted to do. Um and then let's see so then there's the son okay well first of all there's 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 um dr dan okay he's kind of sort of the main character there played mm -hmm. by bill sykes he's not been in anything else and you can tell his delivery throughout the whole production was pretty bad yeah he has a real heavy new england accent i don't know if you could tell chowder that kind of a thing <laughs> he was funny so he was she was playing his wife and then their son was Stuart, and he is actually yeah. one of Rob Roy's sons. Wow. Um, so, and then the other son, the littlest son, the little kid in the very beginning of the movie, the the quote unquote pup that gets chased down by the by the Lycan hunters, he is also one of Rob Roy's sons. So there was a family <laughs> production there. Um, I, I figured there. I even said something to you. That must be the uh mm -hmm. the the son and you said yep yep that was mm -hmm. like that little boy was the son because like most of the time when you do these indie films you know you you got to put your own son in there because nobody's gonna trust you know some <laughs> random person with uh you know with their kid you know like, and you know to be honest i didn't think the son was that bad you know yeah. he really wasn't yeah. there, he was some of the kid. performances were okay you know yeah. Um, oh, one of the things I did want to point out, by the way, is if you were to go on eBay, uh, Rob Roy is actually selling signed copies of the movie and his books. So you can actually oh. actually get that. So nice. get it autographed. How about that? I can <laughs> add it to my stinky movie collection. There you go. There you go. <laughs> As you should. Um, the other person who I thought it did a good, pretty good job, and also which Mr. Moody uh, mentioned was sarah played by libby collins that was the girl the younger uh, girl she's yeah. been in a number of things including mm -hmm. thunderstruck love weddings and other disasters and she's appeared on a number of tv shows as, as a guest player like she was on louie she was in something called the nick oh cool she was um, she was the girl cool. that comes in Bites the guy, then leaves, and you never see her again, right? That's the trick. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. So, she, I, I like. Uh, she I, had a juicy I, little part. She had a, she had a fun little part, but like the, yeah. the my biggest problem, I think probably mm -hmm. what happened if you're telling me that some of this was done at one point or whatever, I bet her, I bet she left the project like at one point, thinking she was done, 
and you know what i mean and then just never came back you know so it's, they're like it's oh, entirely oh. possible oh. it's entirely possible um and then athena i don't know if you remember her she was like the werewolf witchy sort of person <laughs> yeah yeah um, wearing the black the robes and stuff right yeah. right she was played by christy lynn who uh was originally a stunts woman and um, also did kickboxing in her career. Um, but she's also appeared in a few other movies. She was in something called Ghost Bridge and then Dead Ringers. So mm -hmm. she had some uh, some experience doing things. But, you know, like the guy who played the, the, uh, uh, the hunter slash the grill cook guy um, who ends up being a werewolf, that's uh carl mm -hmm. berlman he he's not been in anything before um uh dave the guy the sponsor sean Burgoyan, he was not in anything else before so these are some there's a lot of folks who are sort of one and done and that was it yeah it seems like it and um last point i wanted to make is this movie was filmed entirely in moo hampshire and i'm think this is the only movie we've done so far that can make that claim <laughs> wow so far you know that that means new hampshire's gotta like step it up man and make another <laughs> you gotta make a better movie than this please so, so Minnie, I, I gotta ask you because if you remember the first thing i said to you about this film was it was a mashup of werewolves and and AA, and I wondered what you had to think about that because that's not a combination you ever, ever, ever hear. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I'm trying to think like what what was the point of throwing in the AA stuff, you know? Because it really doesn't come back at all, you know. Like if it were something to say, like he had a drinking problem, and like maybe that was, you know, that that went into his. Uh, like can well, cancerpy kind of thing, you know, or something. The doctor did. Remember, Doctor Dan. The reason they were there right. was because he had a drinking problem, and apparently he like yeah. killed some woman in some operation on like her brain. Like a surgery, yeah. Right, right, right. And, and that was the impetus to get them there. But on the other hand, there were a number of scenes, and I couldn't tell you how accurate they are, but they didn't seem particularly accurate to me. But there were a number of AA scenes in there, and I'm, I'm just not sure what the point of all that was. And I'm, I'm going back to reference because remember, one of the movies that you and I love is American Movie, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that movie is kind of sort of about um, making the making of Coven, which is about AA, a horror movie about AA. That's the only other movie I can think of mm -hmm. where AA and horror is combined like this. So mm -hmm. I have to compare the two and I know you've seen it. So oh, yeah. I was just wondering what your thoughts were. Well, I mean, they didn't do the same thing that Coven did, which is try to make it like where it's like a cult that's coming after them. Um, but this AA had all the people like they're all werewolves, like the whole colony was, I mean, as it turns out, was, we're all werewolves and they're all drinking that water that had silver in it or something, which makes no sense for werewolves. Werewolves can't, can't have silver. Like that's the whole, that's the whole like mythos. Like you're just destroying the, you know, I mean, this movie destroys a lot of the werewolf myths. You know, they try to, they even try to do that at times. I like tell you, oh, that's, that's the movies. They tell you that oh, stuff, yeah. but, you know, but really, this is what really werewolves are like. And I'm like, I mean, you, what? you can toy with mythos. There's a number of movies, especially vampire movies where they change things and they can, they can do it either be, be very convincingly or they, they just do it to suit their tastes. You know, and uh, ankle biters. Ankle biters was the, no. the thing with vampires is they they kept changing their mythos over and over again. Yeah, you and it be became consistent. a problem. And yeah, uh, this movie was semi consistent in that vein, but really, I mean, not consistent with the actual filming. But you know, everything else. You know, like I don't know. Right. It was uh, it's horrible. So I don't know. As far as the AA stuff, it just it. it was like they didn't really show any of the meaning except for the fact that i guess some people are still drinking which made no sense like i've never 
I've never seen stuff like right. that at all in right. those kind of things. Right. And I don't think that exists. You know, I don't think people just go like that. And very obvious too. They weren't very like sneaky about it. And you know, the other thing was the Dave character who was super, super pushy. He's just like randomly showing up at this guy's house in the dark and like surprising him. He's like, you're going to this meeting, aren't you? You know, and then he drags him <laughs> off to a bar and it's just, it's just yeah, weird. Yeah. That- that's also something I don't think happens. I don't think sponsors try to get the other person to go to a bar when they're new right. to sobriety. You know, like that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Um, and he tries to cover it by saying, oh, we're just going to have coffee. And it's it's a way to like control your urges, urges. or something. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, like, look, if this, like, it would make sense if like this is like one of the only restaurants in town or something. And that's how they had, to, you know what I mean? The, they had to go there. But like, obviously they probably had a coffee shop like like you know the only reason they went there and did that is so that the story can continue and which will go into the story right the script bit. demands it and specifically in this part of the story they got to go to that creepy waiter guy so that they can see the um the, well so they can first of all so they can meet the two people who've lost their dad and they're looking for their dad and then oh. to find the, the creepy waiter and the gold watch thing which was ridiculous you want to go into the actual full story so that uh, we can get to that part and everything? Or do you want to... If, if someone can volunteer to talk about it, because it's very convoluted and I, weird. I will try, and you guys help me, uh, help me out here. Yeah, so, I'm trying to help fill in the blanks. I try to help fill in the blanks, because there's going to be some. I haven't watched that, it since that, the, That's the time. good. Moody, Moody, you can cover plot, because <laughs> I'm definitely going to talk to Angel about special effects and makeup. Okay, good. Okay, so the beginning... <laughs> So speaking of special effects and makeup, it starts with one of the worst uh, beginnings I've ever seen in a werewolf movie. So some hunters are out looking for the kid. They're about to go kill that kid, you know, or whatever. And then they hear the howls of the, which which I don't think are wolf howls. I mean, they could have found any wolf howl sound effects and they chose not to. Um, So then the uh okay so then they the the they're eaten they're killed you know or whatever um and uh i guess the thing that he had was stolen by one of the the watch or whatever it was was it a watch or a necklace or yeah something? It, was a, it was a watch yeah so watch was stolen by one of the um uh the werewolves you know or whatever and uh so then we get into the town and we meet uh the the doctor we we find the good doctor is with his uh obnoxious wife who's yelling at him for no no reason at all except just to be obnoxious and he's she calls her son Stuart and has him come down and Stuart uh Stuart trips very quickly I remember that I remember him tripping for you know or whatever and making a joke yeah they made a joke on it too and I was like okay whatever so (laughs) In reality, you would have trouble getting through that doorway uh, yeah. every day. So anyway, they end up going in there and they start talking. And uh, I guess this is where exposition is supposed to start of the, mm-hmm. the doctor, you know, finding out that he fucked up his uh, patient uh, in, during surgery and, uh, and murdered them. And that's why they're sent to this town that doesn't need a doctor. Everybody's healed. He even says that later. Like, I don't. Why? Fine. <laughs> Why am I here? Uh, yeah, the, the town is like Canisburg, something weird like that. It's like that's not a real name. <laughs> no, Canisburg, what New Hampshire or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and so anyway, they end up saying like, so she ends up telling the son finally what happened and that the father like murdered somebody by accident, you know, because he was drunk and oh, the oh, uh, God. you know, guy runs out screaming like freaking out and i'm like what you know like that's not a reaction like he wouldn't have been like that upset about his dad like you know like i don't think you know you just he would have probably been a little bit more sympathetic you know but whatever you know know. like what can we do to get through this not (gasps) (laughs) exactly but you know whatever uh so the father doesn't go and, and my favorite line is that the woman looks over and was like well look what you did now or something yeah. like that and i'm like you fucking did it you bitch i know, <laughs> like, I know. she's so obnoxious 
So, uh, so the guy and goes out. To, yeah, and then he goes out to take the trash. And yeah, why is she sleeping on the couch? Like later, like uh, whatever. But we'll get to that in a second, in a little bit. But uh, so he goes out to take the trash, and that's where the obnoxious sponsor guys like, "Well, aren't you going to go to an AA meeting?" And I'm like thinking, do sponsors really just come up to people out of, like the you know, behind the, you know, stuff like behind some trees and said, Hey, are you going to, you know, that's where like the COVID, uh, you know, cult kind of thing goes is like, I don't think I, I, I literally think sponsors wouldn't give a fuck, you know, um, they just be like, if you're going, you're going, if you don't, you don't, that would be well, my, and that's, he even says, you know, if you're not going to go, then I'm not going to be your sponsor anymore. And I, is that, I don't know. I don't know if that's how that works or, or, or even I, if that, even if that's not how it works, why didn't he just go, okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, right. like this guy's already like intruding on my property. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Like, good. No, good. No. It's not like he needs the sponsor <laughs> for to. like work, you know? Right. So, so anyway, so <laughs> I'll jump in at this point because so he's going to drag him off to the bar, which is really supposed to be a coffee shop, but he tells him it's a coffee shop, but it's a bar. In the meantime, Junior Stewart is upstairs, and all of a sudden he hears a knock on the door. Except it's not from the door; it's from the window, so the sound was incorrect. And then he, we darkly sort of see his shadowy figure go to the window because it's one of those we're shooting it in the daytime or pretending it's night by by coloring it really, really blue. And all of a sudden, this uh, cute teenage girl just pops in and introduces herself. You know, hi. Uh, I'm, you know, your next door neighbor, Sandy, or not Sandy, Sarah. Um, I'm just going to be really cute and hang out in your room for a while. And... Yeah, like, aren't you going to let me in? And <laughs> now at this point, she could have been a vampire, you know, with that kind of thing. Why aren't you going to let me in? Oh, sure. Come on in. You know, mm-hmm. like, but, you know. Well, she's a... okay. It's... That part I buy. I mean, if I was 16 year old and a, and a cute girl appeared out of nowhere and next wanted to come in my room, I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> but he's very confused by this like you know which he should be you know that's i mean i'm sorry angel you were you were a teenage girl at one point did you go uh did you go climb up rock climb by the way she said she <laughs> rock climbed up his uh uh his wall and knocked on the window and stuff did you, did you ever do that and like to see no. boys you know no. usually mm-hmm. you, you give them a call first or or at least yeah. meet them outside or so if they're your next door neighbor you walk outside the ne- next yeah. day you know yeah i mean i i wouldn't be uh you know i would not be exerting any extra energy i think that's on the dude <laughs> i yeah. think you should be the one expending extra energy <laughs> did you ever bite one in the chest and turn him into a werewolf uh i have not done that yet, yet. maybe in a few years okay <laughs> we'll keep that in mind and maybe maybe we can make a movie out of it. Oh, <laughs> please, see? And please. then you can do then you can do the effects of the the better effects for the uh the bite. Much better, much better. <laughs> because in the course of this, yeah, so you know, he decides, um, yeah, he's gonna definitely follow this chick. She wants to go off, she's bored. They want to so go downstairs, like, you know. Remember, because she wants to go make out in the cemetery, which you know, that's a very teenage thing, very yeah, so kind romantic. Of thing so romantic and he's like oh (laughs) sure but i can't climb the walls like you can can we just go out the door and she's like okay if you have to and that's when they pass by mom and they have the sound in there where she's going once again (laughs) why is she sleeping on the couch like i mean it's not like she doesn't have a bed and right. like if she were drunk at that time, I could right. buy that. If she were passed off drunk, that would have been a funny, ironic thing. Right. Like, well, I mean, and, and you think about it, like, you know, a lot of people have like that, those like, you know, that father who's probably, dr- you know, drunk and the, the mother who's, you know, also drunk. And then she's putting blame to the father. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that happens. Yeah. So that would have been a funny thing, but it didn't happen. So no, no. they go off to the cemetery, they run around. And there's some really, really bad examples of sound there because <laughs> clearly it was added in later. And because you, you can tell when they're running around, that's not them talking at that uh, time. Yeah. But they finally settle down and they do a little, little smoochy poochy. And then finally, 
all of a sudden she bites him and with some kind of crappy looking makeup and um it turns out she's some kind of werewolf and then she's like oh, i'm sorry i didn't really mean to do that and he's like yeah whatever i'm just gonna go home now you, you brought the animal out of me or something right. like that <laughs> like i remember that line you know, right. I was like, all right, you know, these they're gonna do this a lot. I knew it. Like they're gonna put a lot of like little werewolf puns in there, you know, and shit. As you do. So he goes back home and then he has a bad sleep. A bad, bad sleep. And then he wakes up with the worst, worst, worst werewolf teeth you're going to see outside worst of a werewolf fog transition. Like, yeah. Uh, ever. Rick Baker would be like shaking his head, like uh, I mean, literally, they took plastic fangs, put it in the man, the yep. poor guy's mouth, and said, "Go gur." But they're 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 the worst ugly looking fangs I've ever seen. Like they didn't even look like normal fangs or whatever. I don't know. They must be like Dollar Tree, fangs, Dollar Store, you know? yeah, <laughs> you know, Party yeah. City, something like that. Yeah, like the worst. Um, I mean, you know, it's not like, I mean, I don't know who produced this movie. I'm willing to bet he did it himself, right. probably from the proceeds of his book. So I guess you make concessions where you can, but they they were not convincing. Hmm. Um, not so, at all. Um, I feel like, honestly, if there was a budget to this movie, most of the budget would have been spent on these weird, hairy costumes. Half of these look like chihuahuas. Some of these have like <laughs> tiny little little teeth. Um, you know, like chihuahua Chewbacca, like hybrid things. I have no idea what they were. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, th- those those are common. So uh <laughs> after that, that's the story kind of goes back to um Dr. Dan and Dave. And that's when they end up meeting the two. Um, people who are uh, looking for their father. Um, it's the one big guy and then Russ. And it turns out, as we mentioned before, even though Russ is a male name, there's a female attached to it. And um, <laughs> they sort of invite themselves over to Dr. Dan's table. Mm. Remember, and um, remember, they were talking. This is one of my favorite parts of the movie. They were talking about, oh, have you seen my my dad? And he's like, oh, I don't know about that. But then he notices the the quote unquote tattoo on the back of the guy's neck that's not there. It's been added in post, and it's just <laughs> floating <laughs> around. Yeah, while well, the guy's moving his neck, the tattoo is moving with it. Moving mm-hmm. with <laughs> I have never seen a fail like that before in my life. Never. No. I mean, it okay, once again, with makeup uh, and Angel, like, it's not that hard to put a fake tattoo on somebody, right? Like, you know, obviously, it's not they're not going to put a real tattoo on the person, but just a drawing on the person's neck. We never yeah. see it again. It's not even mm-hmm. like it was something if that he, needed to be that. A steady hand and waterproof liquid eyeliner. I yeah. mean, really. Like that. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that the scene was shot and then somewhere along the line, someone said, oops, there's some lines about a tattoo. We don't have a tattoo. What are we going to do? And someone said, eh, we'll add it later. Add it in post. Rather than just, well, can we take 10 minutes and draw something back there so that there's something and then just do another take? No, yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. No. But anyway, the, the really crappy tattoos on that guy and then they they and what happens is the guy the doctor uh starts talking to them about the you know about him and then they kind of it it ends up talking about the father and i guess he knew the father and i'm like thinking it's a huge fucking world out there there is no way this guy knew that guy's you know that guy or whatever like that's just that's just too coincidental and and i hate that shit and speaking of which less than five seconds after he mentions knowing the father here comes the creepy waiter guy with the exact same watch that those two were talking about and they just talked about the uh the the inscription and it's there and it's like what What? talk about convenient right (laughs) it was ridiculous so yeah it was it was like, oh, you know, and they mentioned the word. It's like, it was like, it was so funny because they were saying the words or whatever of the in the inscription, 
And then like five seconds later, it drops and then it opens up to that word, you know, or whatever. And I'm like thinking, oh, wow, what? Like, yeah, just terrible. Like, like that's just that's just bad writing and bad directing, you know. Right, right. All of the above. Oh, so then all of it. So now they're they've got to fight the 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 werewolf guy, and it turns out now they know that there are werewolves in this town, and the brother gets killed. So now the the girl Russ has to team up with the doctor and Dan in order to get things right. And Dan, as it turns out, knows a lot about what's going on because it turns out he's a werewolf too. And mm-hmm. he's part of the exposition that goes along and he takes them on various places. They go see a werewolf witch in the woods <laughs> to try and get some, I don't remember why they, they went there. but I just love that you said werewolf witch in the <laughs> woods like it was like something normal. <laughs> 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 And she was a weird character too. Oh, I mean, she, yes, yeah. she was very, very like sniffing people. Well, yeah, that was the most werewolf-like thing that anybody else in the whole movie did. You know, yeah. like I, I mean, that I didn't mind because I was like, okay, she's actually getting to the part of being a werewolf. You know, like I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, but like all the rest of the characters, they kind of like play werewolf really shitty. You know, in yeah. my opinion. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. But it turns out, I mean, after that, the, the story really gets very confuddled and confused and there's a big fight and I'm not really sure who's on what side or exactly what happens. There's a lot of terrible werewolf costumes and a lot of really weird special effects and it, all that. I'm kind of distracted by that because the plot at this point made no difference. But eventually, I guess it turns out OK and and I guess they figured out that um the townspeople are all werewolves and there's silver in the water and that's what's keeping them from changing. But there are certain ones who don't want to do that so that they can become werewolves and become beasts and just kill people whenever they want and blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't really matter because trust me, at this point, all you're interested in is watching the crappy CGI effects and the crappy special effects and the crappy costumes. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't want to watch that. It just sort of like the, that just kept happening, you know. Yeah, it just, it it, just kept happening. It just <laughs> kept happening. It's just and, like and one that, shitty. That is guy. a big, big problem because, like I said, the man wrote two books about this story, about these people, about all of this stuff. We're supposed to be interested in that, and instead, we're not because it just it doesn't matter. We're more interested in the fail that's happening everywhere else that we see and. <laughs> It, you can't help it, you know, yeah. because the one is boring and the other is so ridiculous. I agree. Like it's, it gets like, and yeah, it's, it's like after a while, I was like, why did you make me watch this movie? You know, like <laughs> why, but maybe just to review it so we could say, but okay, God, this movie is terrible. Like it's just, there's uh, at points. I just, we talked a little bit about it, but like the, the points where he would just be in a daze and he'd be dreaming or he thinks he's dreaming or yeah it, I, it, it was hard to tell like what was real kind of and like what wasn't which normally is okay like if you're in a in a good director's hands you know when when it goes from one to the other you know yeah. and you can't tell like that's like fucking inception you know yeah. you can't tell what's real what's not real like but christopher nolan is a great director it can make all of that actually work and editing there's, there's a great editor in that and that's yeah. where editing is key but oh god editing did, 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 did the director edit the movie too i wonder like he had to have you know there's i'm gonna look that up because he uh, had I, to there was no i way. couldn't tell you but it wasn't a very good job i can tell you that much so angel please Talk to us a little bit about the special effects and the makeup and the costumes. I mean, the, oh God, that's really all that there was, was costumes. I mean, makeup, it was really just, like you said, you know, like there were fake teeth, plastic teeth. They didn't take the time to make teeth, mold, you know, mold to the character. Um, like it was, I don't know, like you could, it's like they went to Party City during Halloween. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this, because, I mean, you are a ma- uh, makeups and special effects yeah. person. How difficult or inexpensive is it to make somewhat believable teeth that mold to someone's mouth? Uh, I mean, honestly, you can get 
you can get like beads um even if you don't do the whole like snout prosthetic stuff like you can go on amazon and get these beads that you can melt and mold to your teeth that can you know be like werewolf teeth you can make your teeth sharp like they're super easy believable alternatives that aren't cheesy Mm -hmm. like cosplayers use them all the time you know but we also back is 2005 yeah, I mean, I feel like cosplay. Yeah, well, yeah. I I feel like some sort of um something like that existed back then. I just feel like okay. now it's more advanced. But I I feel, I mean, dental technology. I feel like has been in advancing pretty rapidly. You know, mm-hmm. in the past. I you know, I, see, like I think. I think a lot of the budget went to that, yeah. that costume right there that I'm pointing at, the uh, the That's, bluish yeah. one with the the very pronounced abs that never move. It was clearly <laughs> and, a suit. Right. It's like a yeah, yeah. I feel like the whole budget went to to that because that's I mean that's a pretty big burly costume, you know, like the and it's one. There was only one of them. Oh, oh God! Oh God! The smell! Oh, because <laughs> if you remember, though, in the bar scene there were "quote unquote" werewolves, but yeah. they were just some people with some shit glued to their face in regular clothes for the most part. And then yeah. you know, yep. when his son, same thing with his son, when his son becomes a werewolf, he's just got some shit glued to his face and some teeth. <laughs> Yeah, but he doesn't and have attacking that. the mom, attacking the mom in like the shower and stuff. Like, you know, you could definitely tell like it that was. Uh, uh, they they did the best they could. Also, if you remember the uh, brother, the brother came back, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, and he wasn't he didn't look like that. You know, like that was the only one. There was only yeah. one. So you're right. Like they all the money went into that. Yeah. Yeah, because every, I mean, all the other ones they did, like some of them had like weird slicked back, you know, like hair and like tiny little chihuahua teeth and like some didn't have, you know, like uh, it was just, it, it was, it was all over the place. Narratively, this is problematic because if you can only afford one suit that looks even somewhat realistic, you really need to tailor your narrative so that you're talking about one werewolf. Yeah, and but not the story multiple. is about a whole colony of werewolves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you kind of expect all of them, or at least most of them, to I have mean, that level. Maybe, I mean, it could be, you know, maybe the, the smaller or the younger werewolves look so different because they're younger. You know, maybe this werewolf looks different because he's so mature. You know, like, I don't know. Or he's the alpha of the group. The leader, or maybe, yeah, the alpha. maybe yeah. he's the thermogenesis thing yeah, that, yep, that I was talking yeah. about. Maybe. But none of that was made clear. Nope. And then the, the, the waiter guy, when he became world, he didn't look like that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Yeah, he looked really shitty. Like he was like one of the worst. Uh it was just uh I like I don't know, man. Uh so the, the costumes, the teeth, what about the the special effects and the blood? Yeah, I mean, the blood, they used a lot of, like, visual effects. Like I said, it was, like, that weird red dissipating, like, why did they use that? Like, I I don't know what the, it's so easy to make fake blood. (laughs) It's so easy. (laughs) We made Um, fake blood on our sets. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, it's just. uh, Pretty much as a snap of a finger, too. I mean, we didn't even plan it. We're just like, oh, we best let's whip up some blood. And we did it. It looked good. (laughs) <laughs> well it's um, like they just didn't want to get their clothes dirty okay come on yeah i mean they just they had a specific vision that they that they thought i guess you know looked good the way that they did it like i wow. I, I don't know i just had a thought maybe the werewolf costume the big the big one maybe that was a rental and they couldn't yeah. get blood on it i mean that I, happens I, too yeah um that that could have been a thought i don't know only yeah. the director and the people the crew know you know why yeah. um it was just that was just terrible and like, there was 
there was a lot of bad CGI stuff going on there too. Like I mean, I was, we, like it was it was a '90s music video. All the weird flashes and you know, like the slow mo, like the running through the woods. It was so like I I did. I felt like and, I, and the music, you know, the music that was on with it was. And like I didn't understand why so much of the action took place clearly in front of a green screen projecting the woods when you could just put people in the woods. I don't understand. Why would you do that? Why would you make your movie look so bad? Just put them in the woods and there would be scenes with them in the woods. So you had access. Why did you do this green screen? This terrible, terrible green screen. I don't understand. That, yeah, we, we talked crazy. about that too because we thought that maybe they got kicked out of the woods, so they had to like recreate it, you know? Because like, get out of our woods, you know? I mean, <laughs> we don't want you filming any in back here and making us look bad, you know? I, but there are so many woods in existence. It's true. Right. You know? right. And they all look Just very similar. People in the woods, you know? I mean. <laughs> That, and when you have that problem, I mean, verisimilitude is out the window. It doesn't look realistic. It just, yeah. it, it looked cartoonish. And, yeah. you know, I, I get it. This is your, uh, your first film and you don't really know that. But somewhere along the lines, you have to instinctively know that it's going to look better to put the actors actually in the woods than it is a green screen. Green screen's not going to not going to solve your movie problems and no. plus it's cheap usually you use green screens because you can't afford to go to a uh -huh. place and shoot woods is free man for the most part unless new hampshire is very different yep I'm, so i, I don't, don't understand i will uh real quick uh i i will explain a couple things to you that you that you don't know yourself okay you know, i'm curious all. So the producer, executive producer, Rob Roy. There you go. Composer for the music, Rob Roy. There you go. The cinematographer, Rob Roy. Nice. Editor, Rob Roy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he pretty much was a one-man team. He wrote it, he directed, and he did all that other everything else, visual. But at <laughs> least, at else. least he didn't star in it because then you could say this is one of those crazy vanity pieces. Oh my god, this is so a vanity time. project. I'm sorry. Yeah, it but is. it's not quite at the same level, you know. Yeah. Well, he's not Tommy Wiseau. He's not no. himself in that kind of thing. But he's still terrible, you know. Like, <laughs> This, this I, I, I think there. this was probably largely done because he couldn't afford to to get anybody else to do it rather than, you know, oh, I'm a big star and I can do everything myself. I, you know, I imagine he was just doing everything that he could because there was nobody else, you know. Yeah, everybody else was like this project, no. Definitely. And that's why movies like this I'm dying to have released on Blu-ray um so that we can have commentary so i can find out what's going on there is a disc out there with commentary i just don't know where we can find it is it, it mm. must be out of print or something you know and with commentary so i, I would love to hear him explain these things <laughs> but i don't think he explained like why you know any of this happened he explains like how he did it but you know, like he doesn't yeah explain i i why. imagine most of the why is lack of money i'm sure well, I'm saying like why as in like why was like all of a sudden all this Native American shit in it that did not need to be in the movie because like I'm, oh, I'm God, the caves and all that weird the stuff caves and yes, all that and the weird weird went all red like yeah. you know like it just went all red for like the longest and then she and, walked into the red and then she walked out of the red and I'm yeah, like what yeah yeah her body was like on? halfway in and out of yeah, yeah like that was, Somewhere along the line, there was some Native American Wendigo stuff that was conflated into this story, I think, as a way of explaining where the werewolves came from. But it just made things more confusing, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, even lack of money does not explain the green screen thing. That's spending more money that you didn't need to spend. Once again, it woods. Right. Like, why? <laughs> like, I mean, we, we've all been in very, very cheap, low budget, micro budget productions. <laughs> What's the cheapest place to set a, a production in the woods? Because it's you free. Know, next time, Angel, we have you come out. We're going to do a green screen and we're going to put you in the woods. Because, you know, I've been dying to make an entire movie <laughs> in the green screen just because it would look so ridiculous. And that's the problem is it looks ridiculous. 
<laughs> I know. This whole movie. I almost feel like this whole movie could have been a green screen. I don't know. I don't know. Like everything was just so fake, you know, people fall falling from freaking the was it the one area one part of the bar to the other the bottom with no explanation of what why this just happened you know like it just happens i'm just like right. it's just the movie i guess i don't know <laughs> uh, one of the little oopsies that pops in there and the thing is you know i'm sure riff tracks and red letter media have said all kinds of wonderful things about this but i have not watched it yet <laughs> I've, I've kept myself away from them because I didn't want any of their observations to influence what I was going to say about this particular movie. So after we're done this, I'm going to go back and watch at least the riff tracks and probably the red letter media versions because I'm dying to hear what some of these folks have to say. I don't think we even got into like some of our favorite lines in the movie. There's some ridiculous lines in that movie. Um, I don't know. What did the, what did the guy say? What did the dude say in the movie? He like, um, uh the the uh, there was uh, one there was one scene where the doctor got home and the son was like sick and the wife you know was talking to the husband and the husband just sat down and was like i forgot what line he said but he was just it was like he was just exasperated he was like oh here we go again or something <laughs> i don't know but he, yeah it was just like because he had left and gotten away from all the craziness and then came home and there was still craziness I'm trying to think like, of I was trying to think of the waiter. The waiter said something weird and like ran off, you know, or whatever. When he got caught as like the werewolf, he was like, he said something that just runs off. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? Like <laughs> this movie, I, I don't think, even though we wrote it, I don't think he even understood what you know was going on when he wrote it. There, you know, there are some weird, like just camera scenes too. Like um there I remember like there was a scene where it really just focused in on the on the werewolf witch's face for like a good like four or five seconds just zoomed in on her like weirdly smiling and i'm like why are we focusing on her face for so long like mm -hmm. yeah 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 but i mean the lack of reduction is really what sinks this film i mean lots of day for night shooting um Lots of ADR and, and sounds and voices added in later because they couldn't afford the sound equipment, I guess, or microphones. Um, and then just, you know, poorly done. Um, you can see sometimes lips move and there's nothing, nothing's being said. Um, mm -hmm. uh, editing, you know, mistakes where people just kind of pop in. There's one scene where they're supposed to be walking to the, um, the quote unquote coffee shop and they just kind of appear out of a, out of a an alley like they just finished running like something had chased them but they don't say anything about it they're just like oh okay yeah that's better and we're like well what did something happen did they get chased was there a werewolf what what happened yeah. just never said anything about it and we're like okay <laughs> very I, weird i love um, the uh, imdb user reviews um i'm not gonna read like them really that much but uh like the the uh, title is so bad it's good kind of you know, that's a great, uh, <laughs> that's a great one. My other favorite one was, it said, for the record, I have never been so confused so many times during a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why and did I watch this was another one. <laughs> that That's ultimately, too, the biggest problem of the film is that the, the narrative gets so confused and confuddled. Part of that is because of what you're seeing on screen, but I think part of it, too, is just the basic story itself with all of this extra weirdness coming in from the Wendigo stuff and, mm -hmm. and the silver in the water and some of the other things, you know, I don't know. I mean, a, a, it's easy to do a basic werewolf thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just run with it. You don't need to add all this other stuff. It just, it just weighs the, the narrative down. And then you get, you get confused as, as an audience, you know? So Bone Hill Road was a very simple uh, story, you know, with a little bit of extra thrown in, but still an effective story because it, you pair that down to the minimum and you're you're letting the character or the the creature take over. That's your main mm -hmm. point. Uh -huh. They're not they're not doing that in this. There's all this other extra stuff going on, and yeah. it's just it's problematic. No, I I 100% agree. Uh, and the less the better. I always say, you know, because. If you you don't want to confuse people, and this movie confused me from the get go. 
like the, mm-hmm. the first second of the movie it confused the hell out of me so mm-hmm. you know yeah, I, I and you have to think that Rob Roy was was ambitious. He has a story that he wanted to tell. He's clearly written two books about it. So I'm sure it was his dreamy, dreamy, dream, dream to make this into a movie. Couldn't get the financing with somebody else, so decided to take upon himself to make this into a reality and did what he could. And this is what we've got because he doesn't have those kinds of skills and he couldn't get enough help. So, right. I mean, in, in a way, I kind of feel bad, mm. you know, I mean. <laughs> I don't, because you don't have to release a movie as no, you don't. yourself. So if you release it and it's this terrible, it's you know, yeah, then I don't feel bad at all, man. Like, yeah. you, you fucking, yeah. you, you, you did it yourself, dude. I'm sorry. You know, it's just like the people who put stuff on YouTube, you know, and then people are like, don't make fun of it. I'm like, you put it on YouTube. Like, what do you expect? Like, right. I mean, if you're. If you are proud of the movie because you think it's good, you know, that's one thing. If you're, I, I hope he's not proud of this, but he might be, and he might think this is good. It is not. It is not, right. in, in my yeah. opinion. And the thing is, is that, you know, if it's a lot more, if you've bitten off a lot more than you can chew, then just kind of break it into smaller chunks. Do right. a little here, a little there, get the financing here. Break right. it down so that you can do the scenes in certain ways. You know what I mean? You there are ways that you can manage that where it instead of doing it all at once, you can do it over the course of say a year, year and a half, and have a much better result at the end. So you're saying this werewolf movie bit more than it could chew? So. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Have we finally reached the point where we need to actually talk about rating this movie? We have. We've reached okay. that point. So, the stinkometer. This is the part where we start to score our film based on a 1 to 10 score, by which the lower score means that it's actually a pretty good movie, and the highest score, a 10, uh, is just means that it's a pretty crappy, stinky, horrible movie, because you got to think, the more stink, the higher the number. Mm-hmm. And if you feel kind of settled, you can give a half point score if you want. And then at the end, we total up our score and then we compare it to other movies that we've seen in the season. And we're going to find out what's the stinkiest movie of the season, season five. And we've, five. we've already we've already had some stinkers in this yeah. season. So I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about this film. So I'm going to go off from the very beginning. I'm going to, I'm going to say so. Uh, I looked up and saw that um, what was the Dark Wolf uh, was our la- uh, our last werewolf movie, I think, right? Like that was the last one. I think did. so. So that I gave a nine to, and I I stand by that. That was is definitely a nine. This is an ultimate ten, like <laughs> ten all around for me. I ten can't, plus, huh? Ten plus, yeah. If I could give it a higher rating, I would. Um, it's well, actually, I think Miss Werewolf was the last werewolf movie. Oh, and that was did. also a ten. So there you go. That kind of so makes. So how sense. does this compare to Miss <laughs> Werewolf then? Well, uh, Miss <laughs> Werewolf would probably still still win, uh, yes. but that's only because. <laughs> Because it was like almost three hours long and ridiculous. You know, and oh, Angel, wait till you see Miss Werewolf. I oh, can't no. wait to show oh, you. No. That. Oh, no. Yeah, that, 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 that one was worse than this, but still, this is a 10. Because you know, when we do the stinkometer, it's hard to like say that because like if everything, you know, if there are 10, is, is, is something more than, a, than, than another one? You know, mm-hmm. and yes, you know, Miss Werewolf is still worse than this. But it's still, both of them are still attacked. And you know what? It's funny. <laughs> this werewolf is a million times worse than this film. But it's also a lot more fun. So there you go. In a way, yeah. In a way. <laughs> okay. It, 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 maybe not for all three hours of it. I know. But... If you just skip around, maybe, you know, or yeah. whatever. But like of how inept that movie sort of is. But this is, this is more inept. Like yeah, at this... least... At least David the Rock Nelson knows not to put green screens on for for woods. He just goes out and shoots in his woods right, or his backyard. <laughs> yeah, backyard. But yeah, this this is getting a ten for me too. It's just you, there's just no way you could do this without giving it. A, and for me, giving it a ten. Now, I have said this in the past. You and I have both given movies that we thought were clearly tens, and then we have another person who says, "Well, I can see the good points in this." And, 
gives it a lower score and we're both like oh my goodness really so oh. i'm very curious angel to what you have to say 10 <laughs> yes <laughs> another 30 wow no right. one's around with that well, this is the was it, the second 30 we've gotten, both by you. Thank you. Uh, the first one being Turkish Star Wars. And of course, this next, you know, so. so. Angel, so uh, compare, just really quickly, compare this movie to the other two movies, you know, from Hell It Came and Creeping Terror. I mean, clearly this one was worse. E yeah. Like by a landslide, this was not entertaining to me at all. I felt like I was in a bad trippy music video, and it just I was not here for it. You said, uh, but you know, I'm you said I your attention went other where, everywhere yeah. else because you were bored by it. So you were way. fighting yeah, against like the movie, yeah. Like, I could not, like, it was not grabbing my attention, like, in any way, shape, or form. Like, it was just. And this movie's on Tubi. People can see it on Tubi. And I'm yeah. just, I, I wish Tubi would do the one thing that I guess they're not doing, but, or they're not going to do, but like, I wanted them to do like user reviews and people can rate and review the movies, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. I think, I'm, I bet they're afraid to do that than the movies that they put up there. Yeah, so people might not want to sure. see, you know, mm -hmm. but I think what well, Amazon does it, uh, does Netflix, do? I don't think Netflix does it. But Amazon does it because Amazon has the rating and review sections, you know. So the there you go. The man's got it on Tubi. It means he's getting paid, right? Hopefully, you know, yeah. hopefully he didn't give it to a distributor that doesn't give him any money. But uh, I think he probably, no, he doesn't. It was it was a company that, that had it. I forgot what the company, but the company is to put out other stuff, you know, like I've seen. Wild Eye releasing. <laughs> it's not Wild Eye. It's not Wild Eye. <laughs> and Wild Eye probably would have put this out you know this would have been one of their things but no it was uh it was another company i forgot what it was but it was something i've seen their stuff before you know i've i've, I've, I've seen crap from them before so <laughs> this just feels right you know that it's in there <laughs> uh but it was it was terrible like the whole movie itself and awful. there's just something yeah. really special about a crappy werewolf movie you know i i don't know it's <laughs> i guess it's because of the suit because you never know what you're gonna get some kind of weird crappy suit you know werewolves and yeti movies they both seem to really bring out the worst in some filmmakers i'm not sure why that is <laughs> we watched one for the 31 days of indie horror uh that was student film was done it was it was literally a student film right that the guy put out and everything and it was even though there was a guy in a werewolf mask and jeans and you know whatever it was still fun and it was enjoyable and the characters were mm. you know interesting and you know funny and shit like that and me ramaku and uh shro were just laughing our ass off at it you know kind of thing mm. like we we enjoyed the movie and so even with a shitty werewolf costume or something, you can make a good movie. Just make a fun, interesting story that goes along with it. Don't... That's not confusing. And yeah. Else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say this, though. I tend not to like suits like this thing because they don't move like real people or creatures or anything does. So if yeah. you're going to do that, my feeling is you either get a stunt person and just glue the shit directly to their body or you have something like one of those lycra suits that like are completely form-fitting and you make it out of that because if not if it's just something that's clearly pants and clearly a top with with mm -hmm. sleeves yeah. it's not going to look good at mm -hmm. all it's just not nope you know what i mean you i don't know how many times i've seen where you can tell where the the bottom of the mask ends or the head mm. piece and the, the top of the shoulders begins. You can see a little bit of mm -hmm. neck in there. You know what I mean? And, and the mouth never moves, you know, because it's right. still, right, still right, right. right there. And mm -hmm. like, like I said, that's fine. It, like, I will forgive those things myself if the story and the characters are interest. the other characters are interesting enough. If mm. it's not, I will, I will hate it, you know, because I'm like, okay, if you're not going to have an interesting story, at least have an interesting costume. This movie didn't mm -hmm. have any of that, like none. 
you know in fact the only character i liked in the movie really the only two characters were the two girls one of which never is never seen again so i if she came back and had more stuff to do with it that, that would have been interesting you know yeah. i would have liked it better but you know but angel do you think you could do a uh, a realistic werewolf costume if you had the chance if i if i had the time yeah yeah i i'm you know i'm a perfectionist and you know, um, I've thought about how I would make one, you know, if I had to make one. And I mean, I I would agree with, you know, a, like a, li- a Lycra suit, you know, something super form fitting. And I mean, that'd be hella hair punching, you know, that would take a long time, but it would look more realistic than what we watched right (laughs) yeah yeah i mean i'm just thinking you know the three movies that you've already seen you've got the werewolf you've got the creeping carpet monster and you've got the wandering tree tree (laughs) which which of the three monsters was the worst so far for you Ooh. Mm. i'm still at that as far as monsters yeah still the werewolves the werewolf yeah. It's it's close between the carpet monster and the werewolf. Well, yeah, you I'm thought the tree to... was uh, more, you know, more, you know, better. <laughs> yeah, I don't wow. think the tree was more realistic than that's than scary. <laughs> <laughs> I want the tree now. Like I want to do a killer Tabanga. tree movie. Tabanga, Tabanga for the win. Tabanga. Yes, exactly. Tabanga so wins. Funny. Oh lord. <laughs> But I'm I'm so glad, Angel, that you uh you were such a good sport about this Yay, and watched watched it. Because you could have been like, guys, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do no, it. This is fun. I love doing this. <laughs> this well, it fun. definitely shows you because you said yourself you want to watch more stinky movies and stuff. Oh, yeah. And get more educated on that. And I think it's really good for somebody to watch these movies to see how bad they are, to see what you would do differently. Right, you know. right, right. They're educational in a way. Yeah. 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 Yep. So hopefully we That's were That's kind of what happens when I watch movies now. You know, I used to watch them like because they were like entertaining, but now I watch them to like learn things, you know. I'm like, oh, like I can like picture how, you know, like the camera's being moved and you know, like just yeah, like it's cool. I love it. It's like a science now to me. <laughs> That's good. That's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're very pleased that you were able to come on the show for us. Thank you very much. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll have you back again this season. Oh yes, I'm ready. <laughs> she wants she wants to do more stinky movies, Paul. All yeah. right. Well, you know I have a ton of them, so I think it's your turn next to to show Angel something interesting. Ooh, okay i gotta find her something uh something uh pretty i don't know i i don't know man this is it's gonna be hard to top this one because you know i i don't know if i'd have to find her a good movie now how you know? many times have you said that though i mean come on uh, well i know i'm just saying i might have to find a good movie now for her so that she doesn't i don't i, I don't want to keep scaring her away you know like uh well, already i'm still here at I'm some here. point we are hopefully we are hoping to get her up here so we could uh, have her do forgotten horror classics and those are going to be good movies so there are good movies awaiting you it's just you know we have to work out some time and uh we'll figure it out and it'll be done yeah. It'll be fun. yeah it will definitely be done uh this year too i'm sure because uh, we've got plenty of time like throughout the rest of the year um but i once again thank you angel you were you were an angel you know for coming out and doing this for us so we really thank appreciate you. that yeah. It's no problem. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, thanks, everybody, very much for tuning in. Please join us next month. Or actually, is this the the last one for this month, or do we have more? I don't remember. You're the scheduler guy. I'm going to have to look that up. (laughs) It doesn't matter. There's more episodes that come in. Season 5 is the one where we've got more episodes, three per month this year. And, uh, you know, we'll have lots more waiting for you guys. So please come and join us. And we will see you next time. And uh, we'll see you, right? Everybody? Everybody. Bye. Bye. (laughs) The chicken says we're ready.